The significance of consent is paramount in patient care as we already know from our earlier video on ethical concepts. In this video, we'll talk about how crucial it is to get patient's agreement before starting any dental treatment. Let's begin by first defining what consent entails. In any particular circumstance, consent is defined as two or more parties agreeing on the same item in the same sense. Before any clinical examination or treatment, it's necessary to take consent. It's important that we make sure that the subject is conscious, intellectually sound and at least 12 years old. However, Section 11 of the Indian Contract Act stipulates that a person must be at least 18 years old to engage into a contract. In case the patient is below the age of 18, consent should be obtained in a written format from the parent or guardian of the patient. This will prevent any chance of the patient challenging the validity of the contract in future. On the other hand, there are a number of circumstances where consent is invalid. For instance, consent is deemed invalid if it's given without fully informing the patient about the procedure and any potential dangers. The consent is also deemed invalid in situations where it was given under duress, out of fear of consequences, or due to a misinterpretation of the circumstances. Last but not the least, even in situations where the patient under the age of 12 giving consent is regarded as invalid as previously discussed. Depending on the circumstances in each case, consent could be implied, expressed or informed. When a patient visits a doctor for treatment or a general checkup, it's understood that he has agreed to the medical examination in a general sense. This is known as implied consent. However, this type of consent is only restricted to minor procedures like inspection, palpation, percussion, auscultation and routine sonography. For any other complicated procedure where implied consent is invalid, expressed consent is considered. This can either be oral or written. In case of minor procedures like withdrawing blood or restoration of a tooth, Oral expressed consent is sufficient, but in the case of more complicated cases like extraction of a tooth or any other surgery, for procedures involving general anesthesia or for more complicated diagnostic procedures like CT scan or radiology, obtaining written express consent is a must. Other than implied and expressed consent, in recent times the concept of informed consent has come into force. The dentist must inform the patient about the diagnosis, nature of the treatment, risks involved, chances of success and alternative treatment options. The dentist also should inform the patient about the prognosis of the patient if a particular procedure is not carried out. In cases where a parent consents to the treatment of their child or when a relative consents for a mentally unsound or unconscious patient, all three types of consent can take the shape of a proxy or substitute consent. Now, although taking consent is an extremely important aspect of our profession, there may be situations where it may not be obtained. For instance, in a medical emergency, when a patient's life is at stake, you cannot waste time trying to locate their family to get their consent before starting a treatment. Always remember, medical considerations are considered well above legal problems. Consent may not always be acquired in some other circumstances, including when treating immigrants, members of the armed forces, new inmates, or even when the court orders a psychiatric assessment for a person. To quickly recap, consent is when two or more parties agree to the same thing in the same sense. Consent can be further divided into three types, implied, expressed, and informed. All of these could take the form of substitute consent in case it is not the patient but a family member or close relative of the patient giving consent to the treatment. In conclusion, obtaining consent is a fundamental aspect of dentistry. It ensures that the patients have the right to make informed decisions about their dental care and it is a legal and ethical responsibility for dentists. The process of obtaining consent involves several key steps including ensuring that the patient can provide consent, providing all necessary information, and ensuring that the patient gives their consent voluntarily. By following these steps, dentists can ensure that they provide the best possible care to their patients while respecting their rights and autonomy. For more such videos, 
Download our app and watch videos seamlessly and learn through visually engaging mind maps. We hope we made public health dentistry slightly better for you. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel and see you guys in the next one.